Hi. My name is Ted. Oh, man. I went to see Smith Wigglesworth last night. I want to tell you all about it. I told my wife I wanted to see Smith Wigglesworth because he was in town. And she said, you can't go. I said, why not? She said, because he's a bad man and nobody really gets healed. I, I didn't want to start a fight, so I said, well, then I'm going to go to Johnny's and, and we're going to have a prayer meeting together. And she said, okay. Well, Johnny and I both went to Smith Wigglesworth. There were a lot of people. Oh, oh. Everybody wanted to be healed. And, but I didn't see anybody who was healed. But they were all going to be healed. I knew it. I believed that. And Johnny, he, he had pneumonia. He was coughing and choking all over, and and people were, <laughs> people would move away from both of us because he was coughing so much. Oh. And we went up to be prayed for by Smith Wigglesworth, and and he coughed and coughed all the way up, and and. Smith prayed for him and tried to stay away from him while he was praying. He kept his arms out and prayed for him. And Johnny came back and he wasn't healed, so he went back again in line and Smith told him he got it the first time and go away. So I knew I only had one chance because I get headaches all the time. And and I asked and I went up forward, and I and I went forward, and he put his hands on me, and I said, I get headaches all the time. And he said, that's a demon, and he kicked me in the face three times, and I lost two teeth, and, and my head hurts so much right now, more than ever before. And I didn't know what to tell my wife, because... <laughs> I had to go home, and I didn't want to tell her she was right about Smith Wigglesworth. So I went home and tried to sneak in, but she saw me coming in, and she said, how, how was your prayer meeting? And she took a look at me right after, and she said, what happened to you? And I didn't know what else to say. I couldn't tell her she was right. I couldn't tell her that Smith Wigglesworth kicked me in the face trying to cast out demons. So I made up a story. I, I told her if Johnny and me went to a bar and I started a fight. She's mad at me today, but I didn't have to tell her that she was right. Some parents had a two-month-old baby dying in the hospital. The parents kidnapped the child, took the child to a Smith Wigglesworth meeting.
And Smith looks at the child, looks at the parents and say, can I do what God tells me to do? Well, what would you do if you were the parents? The child's dying anyway, right? He takes the baby, two-month-old, throws the baby against the wall. <laughs> the baby. Then the baby's on the floor. He ta have you ever seen someone play soccer? Have you ever seen them uh, kick a soccer ball? He does that with the baby. The baby falls into the congregation. No crying. Is it dead? 100% healed. No crying. There's something about your great-grandfather I've always wondered. He was a pretty um, uh, rough person. He would punch people that were dying in the stomach. He would kick them. Do you know why he did that? Well, my mom and dad explained to me that he operated in the discerning of spirits very strongly. And so, when he was praying for the sick, he would see the demonic spirit behind the sickness. Mm -hmm. And that's what he was punching. That's what he was hitting. But sometimes... No, no, he, he punched people in the stomach. <laughs> he did. <laughs> but that's where the spirit was. The demon yes. was. I get it. He said, uh, uh, you couldn't be around him. He said, he is so bold, he'd absolutely scare you. You want to just hide. Somebody's kinfolks died, and the somebody was part of his church, but the guy that died was not, but he said out of respect, they wanted him as their pastor to, you know, come over and, and shake everybody's hand or whatever you're going to do. And, and, they, and it, wasn't, it wasn't at the funeral that they, they had placed the body, took, they took the body home to, the, to this person's home, and it had been set... Uh, like, well, you know, like someone in state, and they, he was inside this little, uh, this little dining type of a separated area there, and they had two glass French doors, and the doors were closed, and the coffin that the guy in it is in there behind those glass doors, and they're closed. Well, Mr. Wigglesworth went along. He don't know any of these people, but this friend of mine sure did. He's pastor of this church. And he said they walked in there, and Mr. Wigglesworth didn't say anything to anybody. He just walked in the door, and he looked around, and just walked through that glass doors and shut them behind him, but everybody in there could see him. And dear Lord, Mr. Wigglesworth would shout, you, you could hear him for blocks. He shouted hallelujah on the foredeck of the Queen Mary one time, and everybody, you know, doing their singing and their, you know, all their stuff, and everybody stopped to see what it was. <laughs> the anointing come on that man, you could hear him for blocks. And he just walked in there and walked up to that coffin and pulled that stiff out of there. <laughs> Pull that dead man out of that coffin. And Brother Charles told me, he said, oh, I'm telling you right. He said, I never wanted to run so bad in all my life. And he said, what am I going to do? I can't get out of there. He said, I, I, I was speechless. And said, he, he pulled him out of that box and stood him up in the corner. <laughs> stood him up there and backed off two or three steps and said, in the name of Jesus, walk! And the thing started sliding and slid down the wall. He walked over there and got it, picked it up, stuck it back up in the corner. And he backed off again. In the name of Jesus! And the thing started sliding down the wall. He walked over there and he said he picked that thing up and said he slammed it into the wall. I said, by God, walk. And the guy, and the two of them come walking out. 